What's going on guys, K-Pine here and welcome back. And in this video, I'll be featuring Shadow Gramble in the Catch Cup. I know, I know, save the hate comments for another time. This is an extremely toxic team. The only reason why I'm running this is because it's the Catch Cup. It's inherently toxic in itself, plus Mana Buzz and Annihilate were two extremely meta spawns this season. Also, I'm not spending any resources in this league, so I have to make do with what I got, which is why you're going to see Clefable on Psychic, run Moonblast instead, and the Gramble is on Frustration and Close Combat. I included Crunch on the graphic just so y'all know the move that should be there. Anyways, I did go 14-11 with the team and got a 9-1 run, which I'll be showing in this video. Yeah, that's about it. And with that, let's get right into the battles. Alright, getting to the first battle, we lead Annihilate into the mirror. We're going to save swap instantly into our Clefable as we do have two better answers for this in the pack. My opponent's going to load up on energy and then swap into their Galvantula, and this is not an answer to Clefable up all this energy. So we're going to go for Psychic number one, that will land, and if my opponent goes for the lunge here, the Fairy Winds plus the Psychic should still just about be enough to take it out, but they go for the discharge, so I will easily be able to survive that and get to this next psychic which will take out the galvantula if my opponent decides to let it go which they do so now we get switch advantage and we can just put our annihilate on this lantern and the shadow gramble on that annihilate it has no idea what's coming for it yet we will do the classic strat that shadow gramble users love to do you just save two shields for it and charm through everything so we're letting that go. We bring in our Shadow Gramble. Now my opponent does reach a Night Slash here. And even though Night Slash is resisted, I will shield it up just because I don't want to get sparked down from the Lantern. And as you'll see, look at these charms absolutely running through the Lantern. They're not able to reach two moves in time. And we do what Shadow Gramble does best and charm down that Lantern. GG's. Next battle. Victory Bell lead. This one is on Magical Leaf and not a Razor Leaf, which means it's a fine matchup for my Annihilate to stay in here. If it was on Razor Leaf, that would kind of be a little bit of a core breaker. At least we would be able to survive long enough to get to two Night Slashes regardless. But on Magical Leaf, we can reach three Night Slashes, which is pretty fortunate. But my opponent makes a very nice catch of the Night Slash onto their Incineroar. But now they're gonna have to take super effective damage with counters. So here I'm going to load up on energy and swap into my Clefable, hopefully to catch a Dark Pulse. Hopefully they're on Dark Pulse and Blast Burn and went for the Pulse, but they didn't. They went for the Blast Burn and we've already given up one shield in that lead matchup. We can't give up our second shield. Shadow Gramble without a shield is just as good as dead. So we are do let that Blast Burn go. Back in comes the Victory Bell. We are just able to hang on and make it to the... Meteor Mash, which gets the final shield for my opponent, and you already know what time it is. It's Shadow Gramble time. It's a mana buzz in the back, and this game is over. They do make a nice catch of the Night Slash onto their mana buzz, but we can stay in, force them to throw energy, and from here, we can just tap on through the screen. Look at those charms chunk away at the mana buzz. Some of the more common Pokemon we've seen in this cup are like Mantine, Annihilate, Mana Buzz, and Shadow Gramble does a pretty good job against all three of those. So we do get the charm down of the Mana Buzz. And now we have the close combat so we can shield up that Leaf Blade, land this close combat, which will take out the Victory Bell as we take that match ggs next battle we lead annihilate into whimsicott terrible lead for us so we're going to save swap into our clefable and see what my opponent does my opponent makes a very very nice read here they anticipate that i'm going to swap out right away so they meet it with their cast form as to not let me get an energy head start they end up going for a weather ball rock against my clefable and from here i can go for the double meteor mash which will be enough to take out the cast form as their double weather ball rock will not be so at least i will be able to force a shield advantage in this matchup i go for this meteor mash right away it is on on improper timing but i wanted to outpace the cast form before they reach the next move and they let it go anyways giving me switch advantage which is great because 
we can also reach a Meteor Mash. And this will one-shot that Whimsicott unless they give up the shield or nearly one-shot it, as you'll see there. So we can let this go. As down goes the Clefable, and now we can just bring in our Shadow Gramble to charm through this poor Shadow for Alligator. It's getting absolutely deleted, and they can see GG's. Next battle, there's that Mantine lead. We're going to safe swap into the Clefable, and this is one situation where I really wish I had Moonblast. There are many situations. There were many situations throughout the 25 battles I did on this day where I wish I had Moonblast. And even here, they come in with the Claude Sire. It's like, oh, you have Psychic. This is great. Well, no, Psychic doesn't two-shot the Claude Sire. You need three Psychics. And with that said, you need three Meteor Mashes to KO the Claude Sire as well. The damage difference between Psychic and Meteor Mash, even when Psychic is super effective, isn't that much. So even though I went for the two land of the two Psychics and then the Meteor Mash here, just going for three Meteor Mashes would have been enough regardless. So having Psychic really doesn't do you much good in these kinds of situations. We do play to the CMP tie, which gets the shield from the Claude Sire and we let it take out our Clefable. And now we bring back in our Annihilate and I'm hoping they let this go because if they let the Shadow Ball go, Shadow Gramble is going to go to town, which they do. And look at that, it's a Mana Buzz in the back. And we are in a fantastic position here. It's just the Mana Buzz back line. Shadow Gramble is absolutely feasting on that. They go for a Aerial Ace right there. We play throw the close combat on the CMP tie, which gets their final shield. And now we can let this go. Because if they took out my Shadow Gramble with that Aerial Ace, I could just counter down and leave with a Night Slash for the Mana Buzz. They realize that, not wanting to give my Annihilate any energy. But it doesn't matter because we can shield up one Aerial Ace. They will land that second Aerial Ace, but this is not enough to take out the Annihilate as the counter goes through and takes out the Mantine. GG's. Next battle, we lead Annihilate into another Mantine. So same game, game plan as last time. We're gonna swap into that Clefable. See what my opponent wants to do. And it looks like they're staying in as they are firing off a move. This is enough for the Water Pulse or Ice Beam, which it is. We let it go because, again, we're trying to save that shield for the Gramble. And they bring in a Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. This would be a good counter swap into the Clefable if they instantly counter swapped. Not Clefable being up all this energy because I can force a shield from them as double meteor mash does is enough to take it out and not only that but clefable forces them to throw otherwise i would have reached a third meteor mash so here i can let this go we're putting our full faith into that gramble like always instantly swap into the gramble and my opponent is stayed in this matchup they will be able to reach two area laces to get both shields from my shadow gramble and it will all come down to what they have in the back, which is an Incineroar. And swapping into the Incineroar right here without firing off their second Aerial Ace is an instant lose con, because I can just shield this up, charm down, and then leave with almost the back-to-back -back close combats. If they threw that second Aerial Ace, I, I don't think it would have made a difference anyways, because they get to land that Blast Burn against my Shadow Gramble to take it out, but then my Annihilate just gets to counter down that Incineroar and leave with a Night Slash for the Mantine anyways. But the better play for them definitely would have been to fire off that second aerial ace and then swap into the Incineroar as my opponent concedes. GG's. Next battle, we lead Annihilate into another Annihilate Mirror. So just like last time, we're going to save swap into that Clefable, see what my opponent wants to do. They bring in a Feraligator. And what do you know? Again, I'm wishing I had that Moonblast because Moonblast would one shot this Feraligator. And you want to know what doesn't one shot Feraligator? psychic so hopefully my opponent thinks i'm on moonblast and they give up a shield here which they do a little fortunate because they could have just let that go and taken switch advantage either way but we bring in an annihilate we tank this hydro cannon we're gonna load up on energy try and fire off this night slash which we are able to get to my opponent's most likely gonna give up a shield to preserve their for alligator which they do and hey 
Shadow Gramble with two shields. It's going to put in a ton of work here. We do have to give up one shield to a hydro cannon. Hopefully they don't reach a second, which they don't. And that is very, very fortunate for us here. My opponent comes back in with the annihilate. They must be extremely weak to the gramble in the back. I do give up a shield here to the night slash. I know it's a night slash, but I'm worried about fast move pressure in the back. And I'm still in a winning position here, but I'm no longer in a winning position with this. I did this battle before I knew how much an Aerial Ace did to the Shadow Gramble, so I thought an Aerial Ace would knock out from there, but it does not knock out from there if I don't debuff myself with the close combat yet. So all I need to do is just tank that Aerial Ace, farm down, and then leave with the close combat and I would have had that match, but I did not do that and my opponent takes it, GG's. Next battle, we lead Annihilate into a Nido Queen. The catch cup really bringing out old meta titans as they safe swap into a tapu fini we load up to the shadow ball and we get the night slash bait correctly and now we can bring in our clefable clefable will be able to tank this move from the fini as we fire off this meter mash right away we want to get this off before my opponent can reach a second surf which we do Now from here, I am going to have to give up a shield here. I want to maintain switch advantage just so I can keep my Shadow Gramble away from that Needle Queen. And this is probably one situation in all 25 battles that Psychic actually came in handy was having it to land against the Needle Queen there. Which about puts it into... Night Slash range. Now they swap into that Mantine. So many Mantines in this cup. And we bring in our Gramble. I'm going to let this go because I know at this point my Annihilate is my win condition. Plus, we survive that enough to reach a close combat. This could be a Crunch Trainer. You want to shield it. Either way, close combat KOs from there. And with the Night Slash loaded, we do win the CMP tie to take out the Mantine. And at this point, my opponent realizes the match is over, so they can see GG's. Next battle, we lead Annihilate into Alolan Sand Slash, the dream lead. My opponent's going to save swap into a Kingdra, and so far we've just RPS'd our opponent. A little unfortunate, there's not much they can do. They have access to Octazooka and Outrage. Octazooka doesn't do much damage at all, as you'll see, so I'm not threatened by anything the Kingdra can throw. So we'll load up on energy go for the psychic again another situation where i wish i had moonblast my psychic does land i'm gonna load up on energy throw this meteor mash right before they reach their next octazooka which does take out the kingdra back in comes the a slash I'm gonna fire off this meteor mash right here i'm gonna do some decent amount of damage to the a slash but they have no reason to shield it just because they know that my Annihilate's waiting for it. We fall just short of the next Meteor Mash, but again, it doesn't matter as Annihilate will shred through this A Slash. And in the back, what do you know? Another Mantine. Who could have guessed at this point? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna two shield the Gramble and charm it all the way down as they go for Aerial Ace number one, Aerial Ace number two, which we will give up our second shield to. And one more charm does it for the Mantine. And my opponent is going to lose this game with both of their shields still in play. As the Ice Punch takes out the Gramble. They do reach another move, but Annihilate is easily going to be able to hang on to this. As we get the counter down. GG's. Next battle, we lead Annihilate into Whizcash. Pretty neutral lead here. We're going to load up on energy. Let them throw first once they get to the skull. They actually over farm by one, which is interesting. Most wish cash users throw right away, but we will give up a shield to the scald as it does a decent amount of damage, and they do end up getting the attack drop there from the scald. It's kind of unfortunate, but we are going to fire off the shadow ball in return, which does garner a shield for my opponent. And here I have to let this go again. I have to save at least one shield for that shadow gramble. A lot of the time you'd want two, but against the Whizcash, I wanted to give up one with the Annihilate just because it would put in a lot of work against my back line. So I had to have Annihilate 
deal with it a little bit. We're going to fire off the Mud Bomb right before we reach the Night Slash. And here, Shadow Grambles up one shield to zero. And that's looking very, very promising. As long as they don't have something like a Skarmory on their team, I should be in a very, very good position. So we're going to see what they have. They don't have the Skarmory. And instead, they bring in a Mana Buzz. So they must be double weak to the Shadow Gramble. And Gramble is just going to end up charming through this entire team. Or at least end with a close combat to take it out. They have a charge of bug actually. Which is a little interesting why they didn't bring that in, the in, in the first place. But we're able to reach the close combat. We fire it off on the CMP tie. Which is just not enough to take it out. But we will get a nice fairy win down here. And since we don't have Moonblast, we have to go for the Meteor Mashes and hope it will be enough. The Meteor Mash is not enough. And they reach an Aerial Ace. Oh gosh, is this going to be enough to take out the Clefable or can we hang on? No, we hang on just barely and get the Fairy Wind down. GG's. Getting into the final battle of the video, we lead Annihilate into Skeledurge. Here, I'm not even going to bother building up to the Shadow Ball. I'm just going to fire off the Night Slash on good timing. Just because I want damage on the Skeletor. So Skeletor just runs rampant throughout my entire team. So I want to chip it away as much as possible. So I can charm it down later if needed. They safe swap into a Mana Buzz. And you already know we have the best answer for it in our Shadow Gramble. So they will reach one Aerial Ace. They will reach two Aerial Aces. But we can let this go and charm down all the way. And leave with a move stored. And again, they bring in the Skeletor. They don't know I don't have Crunch. So we're going for the close combat. There's no way they no shield this. Right? That's right. They shield up to respect the Crunch. So now we can wait out a clock. Bring back in our Annihilate. And they're going to fire off a move right away. And here, if they're safe swapping a Mana Buzz, I'm playing it risky. I'm guessing that they have another... Pokemon weak to the Clefable in the back. Especially since they have a fire type Skeletor lead too. And it turns out that they do in the Hakamo. -o. So we have we we have to settle for the psychic here. Not enough to take it out, as they will reach another move. But this is going to just be a brick break. Brick break or dragon dragon claw, either way, it doesn't matter as I will be able to take this match. Throwing two Fairy Winds for good timing against the five turn user. Meteor Mash will get their final shield. And from here, we reach the Meteor Mash or the Psychic in time to take out the Skeleturge. GG's. I actually felt so bad at the end of this day of battles that I stopped using this team. And is it a good one for climbing? Maybe. With all the Annihilate and Mana Buzz in this meta, it's very beneficial to have hard checks to it. As I mentioned earlier, I did go 14 and 11 on the day with this team, where if I had Moonblast instead of Psychic, I probably would have picked up a couple more wins along the way. And I mean, this team was more to mess around with than anything else, but who knows, it may just be worth a shot if you're into that kind of degen. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.